guys, it's Carrie 123 P O P. And for today's video, I'm going to be doing the 21 questions makeup tag. This was originally started by Ali Glein, so I'll have her video linked down below. And also the questions if anyone else wants to answer them. So yeah, so without further ado, let's go. Also, please don't mind like my little curls. It's just a part of having curly hair, you know, it's like they have a mind of their own. So anyway, question one. What is the oldest makeup product you have in your collection? So I've mentioned this before in the eyeshadow palette tag, but it is this eyeshadow palette. So this is the one from Fashini. So I've had this for a really long time and I probably will just keep it, you know, just for keepsake. But yeah, so it's this little guy. Question two, what is your most recent makeup purchase? So my most recent purchase are these eyeliners from NYX. Since NYX is leaving South Africa, they were going for 50% off at Clicks. So I thought I'd pick them up. I really like the eyeliners. They're really creamy and very pigmented. So if you still can get your hands on them, I would definitely recommend picking some up. Thirdly, we have the first makeup product you ever used. So I would definitely think it would have been a lipstick. When I was younger, if I ever like went into my mom's makeup bag and tried to make up on, I always would go for the lipstick first. It was like the easiest thing and I just always liked how lipstick was packaged. So probably lipstick. Next is a makeup trend that I used to love but now hate. So I never really was in this trend myself, like I never had this done, but that trend when everyone like had their eyebrows that were super thin, my mom, my aunts, my cousin, everyone would get the plucked or like waxed and it'd be like super thin, like two little lines like above your eye. And at the time I thought, oh wow, this is great, you know, like so fashionable and whatever. But if I look back at it, I'm like, why? Number five, a trend that you used to hate but now love. So I've been seeing this like on Instagram, but it originated from TikTok where people now like either emphasize or draw on under eye bags. And originally I was just thinking like, you know, like most of us with them, we try and like cover it up or like, you know, conceal it, whatever. And now it's like a trend. So I was like, hey, this is a bit odd. But then like, you know, after a while, I was like, you know, maybe this is nice, you know, bringing like positivity to like under eye bags and, you know, like making them more normal, you know? So yeah, I think that would probably be the trend that I would pick for this category. Next, what is your favorite step in your makeup routine? For me, being the lazy person I am, I love doing highlighter. It's the easiest. You just, you know, kind of brush, 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 swoop, whatever. It's on, looks great, you go. So yeah, highlighter. Number seven, a makeup product that you can't live without. So I would definitely pick lipstick for this. I feel I just kind of have that type of face that even if I have like a full face of makeup on, like a really beautiful eye or like nice bronzer, contour, highlighter, blush, whatever done, if I do not have like a lip gloss, lipstick, whatever on, it feels like, you know, it, it's, it's not complete. It's, I'm not wearing anything. And my mom's also the same, like even with a full face of makeup, if there's no lipstick, you know, it's, it's like, it's like nothing. So yeah, lipstick is something I cannot live without. Next, what sparked your love for makeup? So initially I used to watch James Charles and he was like the first kind of beauty content creator that I ever watched, but I wouldn't watch him for like his beauty content. I initially started watching him for like those sister squad videos. I just found it really funny. And then after that, I kind of went onto his like beauty content stuff. And then from then I just ended up watching more and more and more. And like, I just, I just fell in love. Next, the worst makeup look you've ever done. So I don't have a picture of this, but I'll like try my best to kind of describe how it came out. So we were in Durban and we were having a birthday party for my grand sister and so like all the family was coming over and you know I wanted to look like nice and everything, you know, it's like I haven't seen the family in like a year. And so I had this like brownish orangey kind of a dress and so I wanted like the makeup to match. But um, I used a bit too much of the orange eyeshadow in my look and it was like really bright. So the eyeshadow was just like really bright and just kind of like in your face and it was kind of a shock because like I've never worn like a lot of makeup and most people have never seen me with makeup like this before so my mom was just like okay and then I remember specifically we were video calling my mom's sister my aunt and then she was like quite surprised like with the eyeshadow and then like after that I was like so subconscious and I was just like kind of rubbing the eyeshadow off to try and like you know subdo it or like you know like dull it down so it's not too like in your face because I thought oh my god what the hell did I do because to me it looked great but like I think it was just a bit much for people maybe it just like it was a surprise like you know like when you start wearing makeup, it's like maybe you do like a neutral look, not that kind of like a bright orange sun, like, you know, in your face. But yeah, so basically that, that's a perfect description. Bright orange suns on my eyelids. Next, what is your favorite makeup look that you've created? 
So for this, I definitely have to say that it's a look I created for Diwali. I absolutely loved like creating that look. It was so much fun to just kind of, you know, put on the makeup and then I loved the end result. And it also made me realize like I have a lot of really nice colors that I should use more often. And like, you know, I just felt like this Indian princess, you know, just parading around my house in the langa, you know, just like bow down everybody. Cause I am beautiful. Number 11, what is your favorite drugstore makeup product? I would definitely say it's the Yardley Oatmeal Press Powder and it also has tea tree oil in it. I always get the translucent one because I find it's easier than having to kind of fit like between like, you know, the light, medium or deep. I just easier, I just easier, I just find it easier to go with the translucent. And yeah, I really like this. I also personally think this is like a more affordable alternative to the Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Filter Powder. I do have that powder and that powder is amazing, but I do feel you can get a very similar look with this one. Next, what is your favorite splurge makeup product? And it's hands down, the, the Pat McGrath, the Mothership palette. It is, this is probably my favorite palette like of all time in my collection. I absolutely love Pat's makeup and like this, this palette, it's just, it's just beautiful. I re okay, reflection. It's just really beautiful and I really love it. And I feel it's really versatile. Like you can do it every day, you can do your, the glam, you know, you can do like various things with this palette. Really love the formulas and I really love how they perform. Definitely is a splurge, but like if you want to treat yourself and you are a lover of makeup, I would definitely recommend this. And yeah, I, I just love, I just love Pat, you know. If I don't know if anyone from their PR team or anyone in general who can make it happen, but I wouldn't mind if you guys want to send me some PR, you know, like my mailbox is open. Next, what is your most repurchased makeup item? And they're back again, the Yardley Press Powder. I really love this powder. I do not know how many of these I've purchased like throughout the years. Cause even when I didn't wear makeup, sometimes I would just like kind of throw it on my face, like no foundation, nothing. And it, I don't know, it just kind of makes you look better. So I would always have it. Number 14, what is your earliest makeup memory? My earliest makeup memory is probably from like when you're in school and you do like those concerts. And like when you get to school, your teachers would either put on the makeup for you or like you could do it at home. And I always remember like my mom putting on the lipstick and the eyeshadow for me and I would feel like so like, you know, like cool, like, oh my God, like we're in the play, you know, I'm gonna, gonna perform in front of everyone. And like, you, you're like, it's not like you have like a solo or anything, but it's like, you know, just like that feeling of like when they're putting on your makeup, you're like, oh my God, I am a star. But yeah, that's, that's my earliest makeup memory. Next, your favorite place to shop for makeup. I'd probably have to say Edgar's just because they have majority of the brands that I buy from but I do like mostly shop like you know here and there I don't really have a set place that I kind of always go to and like now with the pandemic I would probably just you know stick to online and like so then I just go to like whatever brand like their site directly like whether it's Mac or like Clinique or yeah etc etc Next what is the most underrated makeup product that you own? This. This little tub of concealer deserves more love. Like this, this is my favorite concealer ever. It's really great. I mean, I'm only wearing this concealer, like I'm not even wearing foundation. I love this concealer so much and I feel it needs more love. Actually, I feel like the brand in general, like the whole like Dermacolor and like Cryolin, they deserve more love because their lip stains are also really, really nice. They do dry down matte, but it's like not like drying and it just, it gives like such a nice look. So yeah, so this little guy, please. Love them more. Love, love him and his family more. Number 17, what is the most overrated makeup product that you own? So I don't own it anymore and I'm sure there are going to be a lot of people who would disagree, but um, I personally think that the Estee Lauder, the Double Wear Foundation is really overrated. It, it, just, it, it, just, it just wasn't for me. I didn't really like how it felt on my face and being honest, sometimes like when I would put it on, it just felt like I was putting paint on my face, like just the way it smelled and kind of felt. So yeah, so uh, I'm not a fan. Next, what is a makeup product that is discontinued and you wish that it would come back? I really loved the Revlon like twist. It was like a twist um, color correcting pen. I do have dark circles, so I really appreciate a really nice color corrector. And this one was just so easy, like the application and just like the way it blended out and the way it worked like with my other products. It was just really great. And then they, they discontinued it and I am sad. 19, where do you get your makeup inspiration from? For me, I kind of just, I look at the palette and just kind of, sometimes it just comes to me and like, I don't really do that like many intricate looks, it's just three colors most of the time. 
very simple or I look at the outfit that I'm gonna wear and just kind of pick something that kind of goes with the outfit or if I really want to kind of do a more complicated or intricate kind of look I just google like red eyeshadow looks pink eyeshadow looks brown eyeshadow looks and then like I look at the pictures that come up and then just kind of draw inspiration from there yeah I'm very simple Number 20, what do you hope to see less of in makeup's future? Ali mentioned this in her video and I agree like 100% but less makeup releases or less frequent makeup releases. There's already like so many brands and like some of them just release and release and release new products all the time like whether it's the same brand or other brands like you know kind of competing and wanting to like you know release it before their competitors but it's just so much and sometimes it's really overwhelming as a consumer like you think do I buy this one do I buy that one you know which one do I not buy you can't buy everything so I would appreciate less frequent releases so I can buy more of your products because then I can save and then buy them another thing that I would like to see less of in makeup is that kind of whole stigma and I know it's like not as bad as it used to be but that whole stigma where it's like you only wear makeup if you feel insecure or like you want to feel more beautiful and I know this from like personal experience like from last year when I really got into makeup people would tell me this like oh why are you wearing it do you not feel beautiful you don't need all of this to feel beautiful and I'm like I know I just enjoy it. I enjoy the process. I like the end product. You know, I feel all that when I have a full face of makeup on, but I feel exactly the same when I'm looking like a potato, you know, bare face potato. Because everybody loves potatoes, you know. But yeah, so I really wish um, there was less of that because I still see it online. I experience it in my own life. So really, please stop. If you're one of those people, stop. Lastly, question 21. What do you hope to see more of in makeup's future? I would definitely love to see more inclusivity in brands. There definitely are brands who, from the get-go, they started off and they were amazing, very inclusive. And there are others who may not have started that way, but they have like extended their ranges and are doing a great job now. But I still feel like others, they can improve on other things and certain brands can start being inclusive. Like, hello, 2021, why are you not doing anything? Also, I would really like to see more brands that are more easily available in South Africa. Um, speaking personally, I do like to try other brands like you see that the other YouTubers use, but if you order from international brands and you get it shipped here, you have to pay so much of money in, ta I was gonna say income tax, in um, custom fees. And it's, I believe, 47.5% of the value of whatever you buy. That's the amount of customs you pay on top of how much you pay for the actual items. So that that is a killer. So it would be appreciated if, you know, maybe some brands would like to just come and open a store here. That would be really nice. Which is actually like, speaking of that, I just found out that there's a Chanel opening in the waterfront. I'm very excited about that. But um, yeah, so can more brands be like Chanel and open up a store maybe in the waterfront or like other malls here. So. I don't have to like sell my kidneys to afford the custom fees or Sephora why don't you just open up a store here too you know that would be really lovely just it doesn't even have to be in like Cape Town it can be in Joba it can be in Durban but as long as you ship you know like through the whole country that, that would be really lovely so that was the 21 questions makeup tag it was super fun to film and if anyone else wants to answer the questions they will be in the description below as well as the original creators video Ali Glines I'll also be down below so you guys can check that out and yeah I hope you guys liked the video and if you did please like share comment and subscribe